Today, we're talking about muzzle training and how to make that a positive experience for your dog. We're going to do that the way that we introduce them to it and how we associate the muzzle and through positive reinforcement. So let's get started. Today we're going to talk about how to positively muzzle train your dog. Now you may have come across this video because someone made the recommendation or suggestion to you, like your veterinarian, a trainer, or a friend, that perhaps your dog would benefit from using a muzzle. We're going to talk a little bit about that, and we're going to talk about some other reasons you might need a muzzle, so stay tuned with me as we go over those things. But before we get into that, if you like this type of video and you want to see more of it, please let me know by hitting that like button and hit the subscribe and the bell to see more just like it. Okay, so let's get right into the why we would use a muzzle. Well, some dogs don't get along well with other dogs, but you still wanna be able to take them out on walks. There are leash laws in many counties and some simply don't obey them or some don't have them. So to avoid any type of conflict, oftentimes owners will use muzzles in the event that another strange dog runs up on their dog. Helps keep the interaction safe between the two dogs. Your dog might be very stressed at the veterinary hospital, so your veterinarian might suggest that you use a muzzle for safety purposes. Or those tiny miniature little adults, your dog might be really anxious around them. Remember that animals have also fight, flight, and freeze, just like humans do. So on the off chance that your dog has the fight system, when their anxiety is engaged and they turn to that, it's a survivability mode. So your dog may lash out or bite in the event that they feel threatened. Muzzle just create a safe barrier and a safe space for both your dog and yourself and others around them, be they dog or human. So why else would we use a muzzle? One of the reasons that you might actually find a muzzle very helpful is in the event that your dog ever experiences an emergency when they're in a severe amount of pain. They're more likely to bite when they're in pain just because again, it's one of those ways that they lash out or communicate that pain to other people around them. They don't know that by you touching them and it hurting that you're actually trying to help. So if your dog is already conditioned to a muzzle and they see that as a good positive thing, that good positive feeling can help bring their stress level down and make their surroundings much more safer for them and the veterinary staff that will have to care for them. All right, so let's move on to what type of muzzle. There's a lot of different types of muzzles out there. So I'm gonna go over my preferences, what I look for and what I don't look for in a specific type of muzzle. I've got one example for you here. This is the Baskerville muzzle. They make several different kinds, but this is one of the ones that they happen to produce. Now to talk a little bit about what I'm not looking for, we're gonna throw up a few different examples so that you can get a visual idea about what not to look for, at least in my opinion, in a muzzle. You don't want something that's restrictive. What I mean by restrictive is holding the dog's mouth shut. The reason this is really important is because the dogs can't pant. The panting is the only way that these dogs are able to cool their body systems down. They don't sweat like humans do. So having something that closes their mouth completely shut doesn't allow for them to pant. It also doesn't allow for them to drink water if they need water through it. I like muzzles that don't have restrictive fronts. So even if it doesn't close the mouth and they're able to open their mouth, if there's too much wire or plastic or leather in the way, you're not able to feed treats and offer positive food reward through that muzzle as well. So now that we know why we use muzzles, and we have an idea of what type of muzzle to use for your dog, proper fitting is important, we'll talk about that in a moment as well. I wanna let you know that we're gonna do this video fresh from the start with Blue Ivy. Blue Ivy has never worn a muzzle in her life, nor has she ever actually even seen a muzzle as far as I know. But I wanna do it fresh and raw so you guys can get an idea of what a positive association and a first time look at a muzzle is for a dog that has no association whatsoever is with the muzzle. So we're gonna grab Blue Ivy and then we're gonna get into the how. We're gonna teach you three different steps. One is gonna be the introduction. The second part is the association to the muzzle itself. And then the third part is how we're going to re reinforce that positive association with the muzzle. First step of muzzle training is the introduction. Now the introduction is super important because you want to allow your dog to develop their own association, their own idea about this crazy cool new gadget that you're gonna introduce them to, right? So I don't even take my muzzle out of the box. I'm gonna leave it in the box and I'm gonna call Blue Ivy over in a minute and let her explore opening this new thing, this new thing that I got, just like getting a bark box out um, so that she can have her own association with what's going on when I open this new package. Now before I get started with that, um, I just wanna show you that I did go ahead and purchase this Baskerville muzzle. I found it on Amazon and just a heads up, I'm not in any way, shape or form uh, sponsored by these guys. It's just a muzzle that I particularly like. They've been making them for a long time. So 
not sponsored by them, but I did find this on Amazon. This is a size five. We'll see how this fits, but if you're looking for size guides, when you go on Amazon and look at them, they do have this description here actually in their online description and profile so that you can get kind of an idea either based on the breed or based on the length and width of your dog's muzzle to get the appropriate fitting. Appropriate fitting is super important because again, you want it to be very comfortable for them, not odd or feel strange on their face to where they wanna kinda of paw it off. All right, so let's get started. Blue Ivy, wake up, come. She was napping. Hi, good girl, hi baby. Did you have a good nap? Are you all rested? Huh? All right, what's this? What is that? Oh, does it smell good? What do you think that is? What is it? Is it something for you? Is it something for you? So we're high pitched right here. We're speaking the way she likes to be spoken to, which she loves the baby voice. She also likes to shove her face in things, so I'm gonna let her. I'm just gonna let her explore this box that we have here. What is it? and encourage her to do that. Good girl, what is that thing? What is that? Good girl. Did you find something else? All right, perfect. So as you can see, no negative association, obviously. She's curious about it. Her seeking behavior is engaged. All good, positive thoughts and feelings. So the next thing I'm gonna do is build the introduction a little bit more. Come here, Blue Ivy. You can't be in the cameraman's lap, come here. So I'm gonna go to a wide open space just to give her uh, an area that there is no confinement. So I'm not pushing her or forcing her to go explore the muzzle, but I'm gonna find a place on the floor and let her explore it herself. Again, so that she can develop her own opinion about this cool new toy that I just pulled out of the box. All right. So I've got the muzzle over here on the floor. Again, in a wide open area so that she can explore it. She thinks we're working right now. So she's paying attention to the fact that I have a treat bag, but I'm gonna show her I'm gonna put some treats down here on the floor by the muzzle. Blue is very food motivated, so I'm taking something that she likes very much and just using it to let her kind of explore the muzzle and get comfortable with it. Good girl, yeah. I'm encouraging her exploration. Look at that, she already put her nose in it. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, what is that? Good job. Blue's also a fan of verbal praise, so if your dog is too, go ahead and encourage them. Talk to them while you do this as well. Good. There you go. That's a good girl. Where'd they go? Find them, Blue. Good job, and that's it. It's that easy, that's step one. That's introducing the muzzle in a positive way. So let's go on to step two, building the association with the muzzle. So step two is the association. So I've got the muzzle here straight out of the box after letting Blue explore it, and I'm gonna build a positive association with this muzzle. Now again, it's straight out of the box. I'm not planning on clipping it on her or anything yet, so we haven't adjusted it. We'll do that after we positively associate the muzzle with her and she gets used to it. For now, don't worry about how it fits or tying it on. This is all work with it off currently. All right, Blue. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show it to her and offer her a treat. Good girl. Show it to her. Oh, thank you. And offer her a treat. She thinks I want her to touch an item. She's like, I know this game. Show it. What's that? Good girl. So just quick, brief seconds of showing it to her. Good. And offering her a nice treat with it. This is good. So nothing forceful. All I'm doing is associating. Good. That this thing right here means good treats. Good stuff comes. Here? No. Thank you. She keeps using her paw because she's very used to touch. Good. Yes, good job. Ready, Blue? The other thing I want to mention too while I'm doing this exercise, just to build some time into this since she's never seen a muzzle before and I want to make sure it's a positive association, is that the negative stereotype of muzzles is really a human thought and a human emotion. Dogs have zero association with anything until they have a reason to. It's all learned behavior. So if you have a negative association with a muzzle, you're likely to transfer that energy and negativity to your dog, and you're likely to associate negative energy with the, with the muzzle, and therefore they might think negatively about it. But as you can see, Blue doesn't know anything about this muzzle. All she knows now is that this strange object here 
has no meaning, no English language meaning, because she doesn't speak English, but she knows that when it's around, she gets good treats. That's it. Good. So I'm just gonna practice this over and over again. As you'll see, I'm doing it pretty quick. I'm presenting the muzzle, removing it, and giving her a treat. All right, step two in association. I'm actually gonna try to feed her some treats through the muzzle. Yes, and then I'm gonna remove it right away. So she took that one really well. She put her face in, right here. No, no touch. The first one went pretty good. So I'll see if she can see the treat. And then I'm gonna remove it right away when she got the treat, okay? Good job, Blue, good girl. So I'm just feeding her treats right through the muzzle and immediately removing the muzzle right after. I wanna do this very slowly so I can build this association. Good girl. Good girl. This is another reason the type of muzzle is important so that you can do this with them. All right. Now I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit. Go a little bit faster than I normally would just to show you. But now I'm gonna see if she'll come forward for the treat. I'm still gonna remove it right away, but I'm getting her to kind of put her face towards it. She's making her own decision here to put her face in the muzzle. Good, and take the treat. Very good. Good, but I'm still removing the muzzle once the treat is done. Now the next thing I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna keep the treats coming. And I'm gonna hold her in there a little bit longer. If she backs out, that's totally okay. It's totally fine. But right now she's perfectly happy getting fed. <laughs> There's a little treat dispenser through this muzzle. She's really getting into it. Oh, I like this thing. This is good stuff. Okay, Blue Ivy, sit. Good, good job. Now I would practice this over and over again, several times, maybe for just a minute at a time to five minutes at a time, a few times a day, just to build a proper association, because you don't want to rush it, right? Good. Good girl. All I'm doing here is just slowing it down. So she's making the choice to put her face in the muzzle for the treat. And I'm slowing my treat down a little bit too. So if you notice, before I was preloading the treat into the muzzle like this and offering it to her. Now I'm asking her and seeing if she will put her face in the muzzle first, which she does, and then gets the treat. That tells me that I'm starting to build an association, a positive association with this muzzle and her food reward to get the treat. If she didn't like this game, look at her. <laughs> she wouldn't put her face in the muzzle willingly. She'd back up, she'd probably pull away from it, but she's very willingly doing this. All right, good girl. Now, into step three we go. We're already partially there. I'm gonna continue this reinforcement. We do that through practice, and the longer that she keeps her face in there, the more goodies that she gets. Good girl. The other way that I'm reinforcing this too is I'm letting her make the decision to put her face in. And when she does, I reward that decision because that's a good decision. All right, good girl. For the next step of association and reinforcement, rather, reinforcement, what I want to do is, um, because this isn't completely on her yet, and obviously I want her to be comfortable with the muzzle completely on, I'm just gonna clip it around her neck and continue the good treat rewards for that as well. Because the sensation of the muzzle on her face and the sensation of the muzzle and the neck clips and the face clips being fastened are two different things. So I got her used to her face in the muzzle first and built a positive association with that. Now I'm gonna clip it around her neck and try to build a positive association with that as well. So this one's pretty loose because again, we haven't adjusted it yet. It just kind of came as is. So just like I did putting my hand in the muzzle, I'm gonna put my hand inside of the strap like this and I'm gonna keep giving her that yummy food reward that she loves so much while I put it on. That's a good girl. She's like, I don't care. Just keep the goodies coming. You can put whatever you want on me, huh? Yes. Good girl. All right, to further reinforce, I'm just gonna move a little bit. Side, good girl, that's a good sit. Again, having something on you feels different moving than it does standing still. So we'll practice with that a few times as well. 
She's doing very well with this exercise so far. Now before I completely fasten everything together, I'm gonna do the same thing with her face and the muzzle and moving as well. Come on. Good girl. Now, if you'll notice, she just pawed the muzzle. That tells me that I'm taking this a little bit too fast. And I am rushing her. She's doing fairly well with it, but if you'll notice, she tried to push it off. That means I need to take a step back and slow down and try again. You don't wanna rush something like this. You want it to stay positive. So I'm gonna step back just a little bit. I'm gonna feed the uh, treat through the muzzle and start there. Pull back a step to where I remove it when the treat's removed or when she stops eating the treat. Good. We'll try this a couple more times and then we'll see if she'll move with us. Good girl, good girl. All right. Come here, Blue. You wanna try this? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Good girl. Ready? Let's see if you'll do it for me. Come here. There you go. Much better. Good job. She's a little more comfortable moving it with her on, moving it, moving with it on her face that time. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, sit. <laughs> She's like, any more? Do I have any more? Okay, next step, we're gonna adjust this and try to fit it on her face. Now I would recommend practicing this over and over again. Again, one to five minutes, just a few times a day before you move on to the step of actually uh, sizing it for your dog <laughs> and fastening the entire thing on their face and reinforcing it on their face, just to slowly introduce it to them and get them very used to it first. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna move along a little bit faster for that. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on her face, give her some reward at the same time and try to size it up a bit. All right, Blue Ivy, come here, mama. I'm gonna give her a little goodie for being such a good girl. We're gonna put this on. So I just slid it over. This top piece is gonna go over the top of her head. Now I can already see that this muzzle's too big for her. Um, I didn't order multiple sizes. Again, I've never had a muzzle for her. I just wanted to do it for training purposes and it's always good to have in case of emergency, um, kind of like mentioned before. So a couple reasons this muzzle's too big if you do decide to get one. As you'll notice down, at, she's looking for cookies. As you'll notice at the bottom, there's a huge gap in between her muzzle. Now you want some space down here, but not this huge gap. Also, when it's properly pushed back, you can see how it's pushing kind of into her eye sockets a little bit. So I'm gonna fasten this, but I'm gonna fasten it kind of loosely because again, it is a little bit, <laughs> a little bit too large for her. So we'll do the best that we can with it. Um, if you end up liking this type of muzzle, again, this is one that I just personally like to, ha uh, personally happen to like a lot. I think it's a good quality brand. Um, it is Baskerville, and I'll go ahead and put the link in the description of this video so that you can order that on Amazon as well. Okay, so you notice there's a couple of different straps that have to be adjusted. One is this clip behind the neck at the base. So this is just a slide clip, which is really, uh, supposed to be fairly easy to adjust. Just gonna tighten this up a good bit, as much as we can. You're being a good girl, Blue Eyed. Yes, you are, you're being so good. So we wanna tighten this strap. And I'm gonna remember every once in a while to give her some goodies for being so patient. Ah, uh, this slow human adjusts all these straps that are way too big. Girl. So if you have a properly fitted muzzle, it should be right at the base of the head here and you should be able to slide two fingers underneath of it. You can see it's, I'm holding it down so you can see what it should properly look like, but it's at the base and it's taut, but you can slide your fingers in and out. This muzzle is obviously way too loose because I can fit way more than two fingers in here. So for it to be comfortable and fitted properly, you definitely wanna just be able to slide those two fingers in there, kinda of like I just showed you for the most part. And again, I'm remembering to give her goodies while she's being patient while I tighten everything up. Okay, so I would definitely go with a size four instead of a five for this one. The other strap you'll notice here is this one across the top of the head. This is about how it should lay against the head. Not too tight like this to where you can see wrinkle on the other side but just nice and loose to where you can slide a finger under there if needed. That's about the, the extent of the tightness that you want. You want it to stay on, but not be uncomfortable. Good girl. Lots of positive reward to go along with it. Good. And the reinforcement part comes with building the duration of time that they wear their muzzle. So practicing over several days to wear you again, introduce the muzzle to them in a positive way. 
and they wear it for longer and longer periods of time. But only good things ever happen when they're wearing it. Only treats, only good positive verbal praise. Take them out for a walk with it on so they get to go for a walk. That's something fun and exciting that most dogs enjoy. Um, just all positive associations and that continuously reinforces that the muzzle is a good thing. That way, if you need to use it, if you have to use it, it's not a stress on the dog. And if anything, it will help calm the dog a bit in a potential state of anxiety because they already have a positive association with this muzzle. Good girl, good job, Blue. Good job, Blue. I hope this helps you positively train your dog on a muzzle. Even if your dog isn't selective, is perfectly friendly with everyone, I still would encourage you to do this. It's just another fun exercise that you never know when it will come in handy. So if you like this type of video, please again let me know by hitting that like button. Hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want to see more like it. Thanks again. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments section and we'll go from there. Take care.